One of the most popular arguments for Islam is what we might call the argument from scientific accuracy. Muslim apologists claim that the Quran contains numerous scientific insights that couldn't have been known by Muhammad apart from divine revelation and that were only verified centuries later. Now, I've debated Muslims on this argument, and I find it very strange because the Quran is a scientific disaster. Everything Muhammad could get wrong, he got wrong. The Quran claims that semen is formed between the backbone and ribs, Surah 86, verses 6 to 7. That the earth is flat, Surah 88, verse 20. That there are seven earths, Surah 65, verse 12. That the sun and the moon chase each other around the earth, Surah 36, verses 38 to 40. That human embryos are blood clots, Surah 22, verse 5. That the sky would fall on the earth if Allah didn't hold it up, Surah 22, verse 65. And that stars are missiles that Allah uses to shoot demons who try to sneak into heaven, Surah 37, verses 6 to 10, and Surah 67, verse 5. But I don't want people to think that I'm making things up, so let's read a few verses. Passages about stars being missiles are interesting, Surah 67, verse 5. And indeed, we have adorned the nearest heaven with lamps, lamps are the stars, and we have made such lamps as missiles to drive away the shayateen, devils, and have prepared for them the torment of the blazing fire. Stars are missiles that drive away demons. How does this work? Surah 37, verses 6 to 10. Verily, we have adorned the nearest heaven with the stars for beauty, and to guard against every rebellious devil. They cannot listen to the higher group, angels, for they are pelted from every side, outcast, and theirs is a constant or painful torment, except such as snatch away something by stealing, and they are pursued by a flaming fire of piercing brightness. Demons who sneak into heaven to steal some information are pursued by a flaming fire of piercing brightness. Muhammad explained in the Hadith that this refers to shooting stars. When you see a shooting star, it's because Allah or the angels caught a demon trying to steal something and hurled a star at the demon. Now, this is silly on multiple levels. Shooting stars aren't really stars. They're rocks that burn up when they enter the Earth's atmosphere. And how many Muslims really believe that when a rock hits the Earth's atmosphere, it's to stop a demon from getting away with valuable information? Muslims today know more about stars than the author of the Quran did. Let's look at another passage. Surah 18, verses 83 to 86. And they ask you about Dhul Karnain. Say, I shall recite to you something of his story. Verily, we established him in the earth, and we gave him the means of everything. So he followed away, until, when he reached the setting place of the sun, he found it setting in a spring of black, muddy, or hot water, and he found near it a people. Dhul Karnain was apparently Alexander the Great, but whoever he was, the Quran says that he traveled so far west, he found the place where the sun sets. The sun sets in a muddy or warm pool. Modern Muslims are embarrassed by this passage, so they say that what it really means is that Dhul Karnain saw the sun's reflection in a pool, and it appeared to him as if the sun was setting in a pool. This obviously isn't what the text says, but it's important to note that Muslims who want to explain the passage this way are claiming to understand the Quran better than Muhammad, because Muhammad himself claimed that the sun sets in a pool. Let's read Sunan Abu Daud 4002. This is a Sahih narration. It was narrated that Abu Dar said, I was riding behind the messenger of Allah while he was on a donkey and the sun was setting. He said, do you know where this sun sets? I said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, it sets in a spring of water. Notice this hadith doesn't say anything about dual Karnain, so it's not telling us about what he saw. This is Muhammad telling one of his companions where the sun goes when it sets. And Muhammad says that it sets in a pool. So the obvious meaning of the Quran is confirmed by Muhammad, and Muhammad and the Quran are simply wrong. When we put the Quran's scientific claims together with the scientific claims in the Hadith, we get a really silly picture of the universe. Muhammad believed that there are seven earths, all of them flat, stacked on top of each other like pancakes, except with a long distance between them. Out on the edge of the top earth, which is our earth, is a pool where the sun sets. There are also seven heavens above the earths, and they're like domes that will fall on us if Allah doesn't hold them up. In the lowest heaven are the stars, which Allah uses to hurl at demons. And all of this is sandwiched 
between a giant fish at the bottom and eight giant goats on top. What did Muhammad get right? Muhammad's view of human reproduction is just as bad. According to Muhammad, semen forms between the backbone and ribs. That's wrong. Then it joins with the female semen. Wrong. And whichever parent's semen is discharged first determines which parent the child will resemble. Wrong. The child spends 40 days as a drop of sperm. Wrong. Then the child spends another 40 days as a clot of blood. Wrong. Then the child becomes a lump. Wrong. Then the child becomes bones. Wrong. Then the bones are wrapped with flesh. Wrong. After the final shape is determined, Allah finally decides whether the child will be male or female. Wrong. So here again, what did Muhammad get right? If this is the greatest evidence for the prophethood of Muhammad, we can only wonder why anyone believes in Islam. Hey, I'm Ben Shapiro with Reality Check. A couple of weeks ago, HBO's Bill Maher got into it with the Islamic expert and horrifyingly mediocre actor who should never, ever, 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 ever play Batman, Ben Affleck, over whether Islam was indeed a violent religion. Here's the exchange. And you're painting a Wait, the whole group religion with no, that. No, no, let, let's get down to who has the right answer here. A billion people, you say. All these billion people don't hold any of billion these... Billion five or something. Like don't hold these pernicious beliefs? No, I wouldn't. No, well, they don't. Of course, he's not alone in taking the PC position that Muslims the world over are tolerant and liberal. He's joined by our president, Barack Obama. Islam teaches peace. Muslims the world over aspire to live with dignity and a sense of justice. Wow, it's just like John Lennon's Imagine. Now, the question isn't whether Islam itself is violent. It's what its adherents believe, because that's what they act upon. There's plenty of violent material in the Old and New Testaments. Hey, I'm an Orthodox Jew. I read the Old Testament a lot. But believers in those particular texts are not currently ramming airliners into towers or beheading journalists or mutilating female genitalia. So, let's examine the question. Is radicalism in the Muslim world a tiny minority phenomenon? So to answer that question, we need to define our terms. We're, we're really not talking about people who are active terrorists. Radical beliefs are a lot broader than terrorists, and anybody who argues otherwise is being naive or foolish or disingenuous. But terrorists draw their moral, financial, and religious support from those who are not terrorists themselves. So, who are the radicals? Ben Affleck actually was right on this. There are approximately 1.6 billion Muslims on the planet, and they're from 49 different countries in terms of where they have a majority. All the population stats, by the way, are from Pew Research as of 2011. Indonesia is the world's most populous Muslim country. It's got almost 205 million Muslims living there. According to one 2009 poll, it showed almost 50% of Indonesians actually support strict Sharia law, not just in Indonesia, but in a lot of countries, and 70% blamed the United States, Israel, or somebody else for 9-11. So, you make that calculation, it's about 143 million people who are radicalized. You scared yet? You know, we're just getting started. Okay, Egypt, 80 million Muslims. According to that same 2009 poll, it showed that 65% want strict Sharia law in every Islamic country, and almost 70% said that they had positive or mixed feelings about bin Laden. So that's 55.2 million more radicals. Pakistan has almost 179 million Muslims, 76%, just over three quarters, want strict Sharia law in all Islamic countries. That is another 135.4 million radicals. Bangladesh, not a country you tend to think of as Muslim, but there are 149 million Muslims living there. As of 2013, just over a quarter said suicide bombings or targeting of civilians was sometimes justified. Another 82% want Sharia to be the official law of the country. And two thirds said honor killings of women can sometimes be justified. Honor killings, two thirds. It's 121.9 million radicals. Nigeria, 75.7 million Muslims live there. 71% favor Sharia law. That's 53.7 million people. Iran, 74.8 million Muslims. 83% favor implementation of Sharia law as of last year. So that's 62.1 million more radicals. Turkey has 74.7 million Muslims. And 32%, this is a moderate Muslim country, probably the most moderate Muslim country, 32% said honor killings of women could actually be justified sometimes. So that's 23.9 million radical Muslims in our moderate ally, Turkey. Morocco, 32.4 million Muslims live there. Just over three quarters support Sharia law. That's 24.6 million radical Muslims in Morocco. Iraq, 31.1 million Muslims live there. 78% say honor killings of women can sometimes be justified. That amounts to 24.3 million Muslim radicals. Afghanistan, 24 million people. A huge majority, 76%, support at least occasionally, just once in a while, honor killings of women. 99% actually want Sharia to be the law of the land. So it's like a Cuban election over there. 24 million radical Muslims over in Afghanistan. 
Jordan, smaller Muslim country, 6.4 million Muslims. Right now, Hamas is enjoying like a 60% approval rating. So 3.8 million radical Muslims in Jordan, which is, again, a moderate country. Palestinian areas, right? We're sending literally hundreds of millions of dollars to the Palestinian areas. We are, the American taxpayers. 4.3 million Muslims live in the Palestinian areas. 78% of those had positive or mixed feelings about bin Laden. 89% support terror attacks on our ally, Israel. 89% support Sharia law. We should give them a state, folks. That's 3.83 million radical Muslims. How about in the West? Okay, let's take it to France. France, 4.7 million Muslims live there. A 2007 poll showed 35% of French Muslims said suicide bombings could sometimes be justified. It's 1.6 million radical Muslims living in France. Great Britain, 2.8 million Muslims living there. 78% wanted cartoonists of Muhammad legally prosecuted. So we're talking about 2.2 million radical Muslims in Great Britain. How about here in the United States? Well, we have a very moderate Muslim population. We do. 2.6 million Muslims live here, according to Pew Research. 13% said violence against civilians can be justified. 19% said they were either favorable toward Al-Qaeda or just didn't know. You know, because who knows, really? That's almost 500,000 radical Muslims here in the United States. Here is the total of the countries that we've gone through just now. 680 million, 30,000. 680 million, 30,000 radical Muslims. And that's out of a total population in those countries of 942.4 million Muslims total. And it seems fair to assume that similar proportions of people in countries like, say, like Algeria, Syria, Sudan, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Tunisia, Somalia, and Libya are also radicalized. And if they are, then, well, we're above 800 million Muslims who are radicalized more than half the Muslims on earth. That's not a minority, that's now a majority, and that's still not even surveying hundreds of millions of Muslims in other countries. In other words, the myth of the tiny radical Muslim minority is just that, it's a myth. And unfortunately, it's a myth that's going to get a lot of civilized people killed. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel or click here to give a quick donation.